I'm in West Alabama, and it's the time of the year where we're in our summer dearth in my part of the world, and I've got to feed my bees. And every year I'm trying different ways to feed these bees and trying to different methods that are number one, don't cost me as much money, and number two, it's easier. I mean, I'm trying to streamline things best I can because this whole process of, you know, going the hard way is uh, the slow way and I need something that's faster and a faster way to feed my bees. So just want to show you kind of what I'm doing, what I'm trying different, what works for me and I may not work for you, but at least uh, it's something that I'm trying here that, that hopefully this will be very efficient. I always do things the hard way. You know, some of these ideas I wish I would have known when I first started beekeeping. I started this about seven years ago and um, goodness, <laughs> I've done everything the hard way in the wrong way it seems like. So I'm trying to make life easier. I've got about 60 colonies of bees now and I, I don't have time to sit there and work my butt off for each and every single one of them. So Streamline is my friend on this situation. So here's what I do. So to make life a little easier, I'll mix my sugar water at home and uh, bring it to the bee yard in these five gallon buckets. It takes about 25 pounds of sugar to make five gallons of sugar water if you do the one-to-one -one ratio I like to do one-to-one -one. Uh, when I get to the bee yard I've got a drill with a little logger here a paint mixer basically and uh, what I'll do is just kind of give it a little quick extra stir now the bucket's nearly full so you can't do this too much but just kind of make sure everything's stirred up good usually it is there's sometimes a little sugar in the bottom Once it's full, I'll take it over to the beehive. Got about two gallons of sugar water in there. So I can fill several feeders at one time. So to get these one gallon feeders, this is the size of a medium frame, essentially the depth of it. Uh, the width is the size of, I think, one and a half frames or maybe two frames. So you've got to take, if you've got a 10 frame box, you got to take two frames out to be able to slide this in. And you see it's got the lips there on both sides. You slide this down in here. Try not squishing your bees. No smoke. There we go. So if you take two frames out, this will fit in here nice. And I'll grab my sugar water pail. Simply fill it up. A lot easier with two hands versus one. Once you fill this up, since we're in the summer dearth now, I'll wait probably a couple of weeks and check on them again and see if they need any more. But this fills, fits a whole gallon of sugar water. So they should be good on this for a little while. There we go. Bees shouldn't drown in this. I've got a little float. Plus, there's not really much of a space. I mean, bees can sit there and vibrate to the edge. If you notice the edge of this has little bumps, little ribs and bumps, so these have something to cling on to, so see if this bee can get out of this little sticky situation. Let's watch. Oh, there we go. So just like that. So bees shouldn't drown in here. I mean, you may have a few, obviously not make it, but uh, if bees fall in here, they'll do the little wiggle until they get to the side, and then they'll be able to get out. Pretty cool. As soon as I get done with that, all I do is put my top back on and move on to the next colony fill them with sugar water, and then move on. Look at the bees drinking. So the whole process of feeding sugar water to bees, I'm trying to find the most efficient way to feed the bees without any waste. And last year I started these one gallon sugar water feeder buckets, or essentially they're just a one gallon bucket or pail and they sit inverted on top of a colony of bees and underneath here there's a screen plug that sugar water can come out of but if you turn this upside down it will create a vacuum the pressure and suspend the sugar water inside the bucket so it doesn't just all go pouring out into the hive inside the hive on the roof of this colony i've got a one and a half inch hole drilled here so bees can come up to it but one problem i'm finding with this is it tends to leak a little bit uh, these buckets leak some, you know, the vacuum seal is not always perfect. So either you get sugar water just dripping down into here on some of these or it runs down the side and then you attract robber bees and have a whole other list of problems. 
Another issue in fighting with these is the screen top. These tend to propolize this. In fact, you can kind of see where they've done this pretty well. They'll seal this thing up to where no sugar water at all will come through here, and they are a pain to clean. Um, found these little end caps here. These are for pipes. That fits this hole perfectly, so we got these. Put this on top of here, and just keep my rainwater out. There we go. I want to show you this too, so this is kind of one thing I've tried in the past as well, is feeding, an outdoor feeding method, and uh, let me take you over here to my sugar water feeder. Pretty good little walk. You don't want these things next to your hives because that will tend to cause robbing as well. Uh, I don't really do this much anymore because it seems to be wasteful. Now, first off, I got a pool with water in it. You know, this is mainly just rainwater, but during the summertime when there's not much out there, bees like that, appreciate that. So what I did was take a clothing container here and I drilled these two inch holes just below the lid. So this will keep structural integrity. But inside here, I've got hay. And what I would do is dump my sugar water into this. I would close this to keep rainwater from getting in work pretty well problem is they will go through this is i think 10 gallons they'll go through this 10 gallon tote in one day so you know you're sitting here every day in a summer dearth feeding 10 gallons at a time well that that costs a lot of money that's a lot of sugar you have to buy and mix up so i'm kind of doing away with this idea just because that yes it is very efficient but you know, you end up with your stronger colonies sucking up all the sugar water before your weaker colonies that need more um, get a chance to get it. So this feeds everybody, at least with the method I'm trying now, it's more select feeding. So if there's a colony that weighs enough that, that has that weight I'm looking for, I'm not gonna feed them. I'm gonna feed the ones that need it. Uh, so this outdoor method is good and all for short term, but you're just gonna fatten up your already fat colonies. I came and fed some of these bees yesterday and this was one gallon of sugar water. Just wanted to show you what it looks like underneath here. Look at that. These bees have drank nearly every bit of that one gallon I put in here. That's incredible. Now I'm not gonna sit here and continuously feed and feed and feed these bees. Now what they've done is taken this gallon of sugar water and they put down in the nest where they want it, where they need it. 